We all know and love Cessna. It makes great all-around planes, great trainers, and great cruisers, suitable both for a family trip or utility mission. Yeah, of course, it has its own drawbacks, but overall, we can all agree that they make pretty great planes. But all of them had one common issue. Well, it's not technically the issue, but we all know. Cessnas are pretty slow, especially single-engine ones. While newer Diamonds, Cirrus, and even some experimental planes cruise close to 200 knots, Model 172 has a red limiter just below 160. So, how to be a cool kid if you fly Cessna? Well, Cessna has an answer. Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and in this video, we tell a truly amazing story of one of the most controversial planes in general aviation, the Cessna 400, later known as TTX. To fully understand Cessna TTX's origin, we need to wind back time to 1993, when legendary aircraft designer Lance Neubauer, founder of Lanceair, was getting encouraged by NASA and others to develop a type-certified aircraft after his recent successes with Lanceair 4 and ES. What his visionary mind came up with was the beautiful Lanceair EC, a single-engine, low-wing plane that was the fastest fixed-gear aircraft at the time of its release. It was renamed to Columbia 300 in 1998 after a hefty certification process, and it quickly became so popular that Lancer established a separate branch, Columbia Aircraft Manufacturing Corporation, to focus only on this bird. However, the Columbia 300 was only able to reign the sky for a little over four years until its successor, Columbia 400, took its place. Model 400 featured several crucial upgrades over its predecessor, including a turbocharged engine, minor fuselage improvements, and better avionics. I'll go over every single one of these features later, but make no mistake, that engine, along with its design, made the Columbia 400 truly an incredible plane. When asked to describe it in a word, aviation author Richard Collins said this, I thought about neat and cool and complete and integrated and fast and pretty. Then I dismissed them all and decided on airplane, because the Columbia 400 is truly what an airplane should be. But in spite of all their features, the Columbia planes couldn't achieve much commercial success. This was largely due to the chosen market segment. In such class, single-engine, low-wing four-seaters, and with advanced avionics coming standard, there already were Cirrus and Mooney, and if you're not looking for certified birds, there are even more options to choose from. So, before you knew it, Columbia Aircraft Manufacturing was purchased for $26.5 million by Cessna in 2007, after which the Columbia 350 and 400 were changed to Cessna 350 and 400 instead. Little did anyone know that the Cessna purchase would set in motion a chain of unfortunate events that would give birth to one of the most controversial general aviation planes, Model TTX. Fast forward to 2009, and the world is still healing from the economic crisis. The crisis adversely affected a lot of industries, and the aviation industry was no exception to the rule. Cessna was just another one of the financially hurt companies who was looking to make their money back. And what better way to do it than packing your bags and just head out to Mexico? No, seriously, that's exactly what Cessna did. In 2009, Cessna made the decision to move their freshly acquired Columbia construction plant from Bend, Oregon to Chihuahua, Mexico, to save up on labor and construction costs. Their plan was to construct the parts in Mexico, transport them to the factory in Independence, Kansas, to be assembled and completed for delivery. And while now it looks like an obvious mistake, even back then it wasn't the smartest move, because in one fell swoop, Cessna not only lost the only workforce who had experience creating the Columbia line of planes, but also the ideal location where all the models were previously built. Not only that, but the move to Mexico also took a lot of time, and when production did resume, problems regarding the humidity and the temperature of the facility started popping up, but went unaware for a while. That is, until disaster struck. On one of Model 400's test flights, 
it suffered significant delamination along one of the wing spars, which resulted in a fuel leak. While the pilot safely landed the plane and no one was harmed, this unfortunate incident led the FAA to immediately pull out the big gun, an Emergency Airworthiness Directive, or AD. An emergency AD can spell big trouble for an aircraft manufacturer, and conversations about Cessna quickly turned into ridicule and embarrassment for the company, especially amongst investors and prospective buyers. Like, it's not some sketchy new manufacturer, it's Cessna, holder of multiple records of most sold general aviation models in the world. The FAA fined Cessna $2.4 million for failing to follow quality assurance requirements while creating composite fiberglass components in their Mexico plant. After further investigation, the FAA found that the excess humidity in the facility had caused the parts to not cure correctly, and also discovered 82 other aircraft parts that had been incorrectly made. This was bad news for Cessna, and they had to make a quick comeback to get some positive publicity. So, they worked out all the quality defects in their plant and focused on improving the Cessna 400 as much as they could. And after a very valid attempt to break the Guinness World Record for most airplane renames, Cessna re-released the Cessna 400 as Cessna TTX that came with several new and upgraded features. Well, besides fixing the manufacturing issues, TTX is generally the same 400, but with all the new and fancy Garmin stuff. It features a massive G2000 glass cockpit with two 14-inch HD touchscreen displays with all the latest bells and whistles. GFC 700 Autopilot, Synthetic Vision Technology, GTS 800 Traffic Avoidance, and more. Well, besides that, there weren't lots of other upgrades. But another feature that's worth mentioning, TTX is now equipped with a TKS ice protection system. Well, you probably already picture yourself in this high-tech cockpit, so let's check the specs of this bird and see why it was one of the fastest in its class. The heart of the TTX is Lance Neubauer's favorite engine. By the way, I've made a video about the Lancer Model 4. Give it a watch. It's an amazing bird with even more impressive specs. But back to Cessna. TTX is equipped with a turbocharged Continental TSIO 550 in its C variant, pushing 310 horsepower. That's the same old but reliable engine that you'll find on Turbo Cirrus SR22, Mooney M20, and, of course, Lancer. When combined with three-bladed Macaulay prop, it can accelerate to speeds far beyond the majority of certified four-seaters. Your usual cruise at around 10,000 feet will be around 200 knots. And if you want to go even faster, climb to flight level 250, where, above any weather, your max speed will be 235 knots. In terms of range, it's also impressive. See, TTX fuselage is much lighter compared to, for example, Model 182, thus can store more fuel. 102 gallons are available for you, and on an economical cruise of 55% power, TSIO 550 burns just 13 gallons per hour, giving you an approximate range of 1,100 nautical miles. More than enough to go from Miami to New York or London to Rome. Now, stepping inside, you will instantly recognize Cessna, all new Cessnas have this same grey textured plastic, pretty nice seats, and plenty of USB ports. But TTX has a less than you would expect number of buttons, thanks to the touchscreen G2000. Of course, the heritage of Lancer, side stick is here, and isn't it somehow weird to have it on a Cessna? Like, aren't those two absolutely different philosophies, Lancer and Cessna? For me, it always was like raw power versus practicality. But TTX was exactly something that would offer best of both worlds. If you're looking to acquire one of these birds, be ready to set aside around five to seven hundred thousand dollars. But if you don't really need all the high-tech Garmin glass cockpits, Columbia 400 is basically the same plane, but a bit older. Thus, it doesn't have all the latest tech, but costs much less, around 300 grand. Well, here's a story of Cessna TTX. Unfortunately, pilots who fly Cessna didn't really value the performance and handling, 
as Cessnas historically were on par with a comfortable van rather than a sports car. And even if you wanted a bit more technology and a bit more speed, Cirrus, Mooney, and Diamond had even more to offer for the same price. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm always glad to read them. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds. Fly safe, and until next time.